Hey guys, hope you're all okay. Join me in my dining room because it's raining outside and I'm with my new bike. Just thought while it's inside and clean, not covered in muck, I would have a little chat about it, about bits I've added to it. I only got it yesterday. Right, so this bike, I ordered it five months ago from my buddy John at Rutland Cycles in Cambridge. <laughs> and it took five months to turn up. I think it was stuck in the port in a container for two months. As we all know with the Brexit stuff, uh, it's just been a nightmare uh, getting bikes. And as we all know, you know, bikes come in stock and then within a day, you know, a shop can run out of bikes. They're all gone, just like that. So <laughs> it's absolutely mad. So I thought, well, you know, I'll wait for it. I wasn't going to ride it much anyway because I'm not doing any off-roading. I'm not going to any trail centres or anything because we're in lockdown. So I thought, well, I'll take delivery of it anyway. And if I don't ride it for a few months and it's in my garage, then no problem at all. So, uh, yeah. It's the White 180 RS V2. The V2, I guess, the version 2, I think that's why it's called V2. It's the differences, I think, between... The previous uh, model is the previous model had a coil shock and now this has got it's the Fox what is it I can't really see what it is float is it float x2 yeah float x2 there you go so I guess the way Fox well not even Fox the way bike manufacturers see it is I guess go into an air shock instead of a coil shock. It gives it's just more got more adjustment. Same with the new Kinevo. I think that's got an air shock on it as well. You know, I think for the average size rider, the air shock's probably better because it's more adjustable. And this one hasn't got the horrible cables hanging around underneath the motor, which the previous versions had, and that was not good. They were getting caught on rocks and logs and stuff like that. <clears throat> so. Yeah, that's the main difference, I think, between the 2020 and the 2021, which this is. I don't think there's anything else that's different. Tell me if I'm wrong. I, I, I don't know. I think the gear set, the brakes, everything's the same. Could be wrong. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm not going to run over the spec this massively, because there's no point. You can look at that online or there's other videos, but it's got SRAM. Is it X01 gear set, the Eagle? There you go, just see in there. Uh, da, 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 da. Brakes are code RS, RSCs. It means nothing to me. You know, they're four pot. I think, you know, they'd be, they, they should be pretty good on a bike like this, a downhill bike like this. I think they should, they should work pretty well. Fingers crossed anyway. Uh, it's got race face crank arms. Headset. Clamp, whatever you call it. I'm not an expert on bikes. Uh, bars are, I think, 800 mil. Race face, da -da -da -da. turbine, something or other. Uh, but the big thing with this bike, obviously, as you guys know who know about these bikes, it's 180 mil travel, which I had on my previous high bike, which just made it a proper downhill weapon. That was amazing. So obviously, it's 180 mil air shock and Fox Factory 38 forks with the little bleeder valves here. Actually, I don't know if you heard that, little bit of air just came out of there. So, things like that, you know, it makes this bike, yeah, what it is. So, I'm so looking forward to taking it to Wales, hitting some mad trails, and bike park Wales as well, obviously, when we're allowed to leave the house and go and do things like that. Uh, yeah, so I haven't even ridden this, honestly. It, we, I got it picked up in the van, Put it in the house yesterday. I've sat on it. Riding position feels brilliant. It, I can't think of a better bike for me. I don't know what more I'd want in a bike. The only thing it's missing for the price that it was is the factory, Fox factory dropper post. It's got a, I think it's a crank. If you can see it, it's a Crank Brothers dropper post, which I'm sure is brilliant. You know, even the little levers all got machine parts to it and that's it's, it's spot on. But I think to finish the bike off, me being a bit vain, I think it needs a uh, Kashima dropper post. I've ordered one, it's coming in May. There's a massive back, it's back ordered. So I'm not in a rush to get it, but I think that will finish the bike off perfectly. DT Swiss wheels, uh, Maxxis, Maxxis tires. What are the tires? 
Da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, tu uh, their tubeless. That's DT Swiss's version of a uh, their tubeless valve. So they are tubeless. My mate John did that at the shop. Uh, it's got white hubs. I've just noticed actually. No, didn't know they were white actually. The things I've changed already. I love, got a new set of Ergon grips. I love these grips, just the way they feel. They're moulded for your thumb there, they're just superb. So yeah, I have got an Ergon seat. It's on my Focus, because I'm using it on the road a lot at the moment. I love Ergon seats, so comfortable. And with a little back lip they have on them. So when I, once I use this off-road, I will put the Ergon seat on this, because this is quite a hard seat, it's like a brick. Uh, I've gone for the, my lovely, my most favourite pedals ever, the uh, Crank Brothers Danny McCaskill pedals. Oh, I've, I've got, I've had them on three of my bikes now, and they're absolutely brilliant. So, there you go, DM there. So yeah guys, anyone with these one of these bikes, don't get a normal water bottle cage like I have, because you can't get your water bottle in and out, I didn't realise. So I've got one coming from White that's a, uh, it's a side, entry water bottle if that makes any sense you get the water bottle out of the side this one i'll probably well, is about 10 quid i'll probably just have it as a spare one so yeah be beware because there's no room hardly i mean you have to have a really small water bottle anyway you can't have a massive water bottle it won't fit so uh, oh mud guard i've got a mucky nuts mud guard ignore my horrible orange uh cable ties i've got black ones coming i have tried to find the fox mud guard that bolts on bolts onto there and it bolts onto the bleeder valves it's a black one but everywhere's out of stock they're about 20 25 quid bit of a rip off for a bit of plastic but i will get one of them so for now once i get these in black this will do the job it's better than nothing i don't bother with the back one i'll just get muddy not so fussed about that uh so yeah so that's all i've added so far that's all i will add i'll change the seat uh, when i go off road new grips pedals Tubeless in the tyres, uh, mudguard. Oh, again, I have added the Kiox screen. I wouldn't be without it. I know it means more cables, and this is a cable fest. It's ridiculous, but there's nothing you can do about it. So I love this. Uh, it got me out of trouble the other day. We were somewhere, and I plotted the route on my phone. It sent the route to this, and it took us through these woods and stuff. I was with my bro. It was amazing. So, yeah. They're not cheap, 180 quid or whatever they are. And obviously with what I do, I tether, I'm gonna tether that cable tie will be linked to another one round there. Cause obviously when this comes off, as I've said before, the bike doesn't work. So this is, if this flies off in the bushes when you're riding, you, you're in big trouble. You'll be uh, struggling to ride home without a uh, battery. Uh, so yeah, I've tethered that. You can screw this on, but I'd rather in a crash it sort of fall off, but then just dangle down onto the frame. So that's my little invention with this little, but I haven't got the other cable time, I'm waiting for them to arrive today. So obviously with that, it does mean you have that as well, which makes more another cable. But I love this thing. I just, I just think it's brilliant. Absolutely love it. It's just superb, the information you have on there. So I wouldn't be without that. I've got that on my focus as well. So you can mount it here but I haven't bothered. I like it central. I think my OCD doesn't like it to the side. But yeah, if it's a heavy crash, you'll knock it off, but that's, that's how it is. Anyway, right guys, the last thing to chat about is yesterday, I spent about three hours doing it. I fitted my InvisiFrame kit. I've actually put an InvisiFrame sticker there. So the whole bike is InvisiFramed. It's so good. You can, well, you can really pretty much hardly see I don't know if you can see, there's a join there, where it goes up into there. It's absolutely superb. Yeah, I just think, a bike like this, you know, the price of this was, was it 6,800 6, quid? And I've got 0% finance deal on it, but it's not cheap. So I think anyone that gets a bike, of any value to be fair, spends 70 quid on a, on a kit. Yes, it takes three hours to fit, but I think it's worth, worth every penny. I have ordered, I didn't realise it didn't come in the kit, I've ordered a fork, it was £25 extra, I've ordered a fork uh, kit, InvisiFrame kit, just to cover the forks, because I'm always damaging my forks, so 
you know, my theory is if you've got a bike, I, I, I just, I use bikes to the max. I cover them in mud. You know, I use them for what they're meant to be used for. But if you can protect them for the next owner, I think that's great. You know, I, I, for, you know, a thing that costs 70 pounds and a bike that costs thousands, I think it's worth every penny. That's just my opinion. And they're not hard to fit. It just takes time. My brother did his Canevo. Uh, and it, it's, yeah, I just think it's worth doing. Obviously this is, this only comes in one color. It's like a matte graphite, gray, black, not quite black. So it's a matte color. So you obviously have to make sure you pick the matte InvisiFrame to go with the paint and not the gloss one. So I haven't worked out, I'll have to watch a few videos on how to uh, adjust all these forks because I've got no idea. And I guess there's another adjustment under here. Is there one under this cap? Yeah, there you go, look. So I'm not gonna even think about that yet until I take it out for a, a run. I'll keep it in the factory settings for now and uh, go from there. Oh, one thing I did notice, which is a little bit odd, why there's no, I don't know what they're called, is it a chain guide guard? A little thing, there's one on this Levo, look there. I'm not sure what that's called, chain guide? This is the first bike I've had and it hasn't got one. But obviously white know what they're doing, you know. Is there more chance of the chain coming off if it hasn't got one of those? I have no idea. I must admit my mate in Wales got a stone stuck in his, on his uh, Canevo. So obviously there's less chance of that happening when you haven't got one fitted, so. Yeah, I just thought it was a bit odd. It's the first bike I've had without without that fitted. So, uh, oh, there's the charging. The charging point is there, which is pretty good. That that forms a really good seal. You know, some of these things are not designed very well. But that is, you know, these are designed in the UK, as it says there. So they are designed for the shitty British weather. You know, they're made in Taiwan or somewhere where most bikes are made. But you know, this has been designed for bad weather. So that's probably the place that gets the least mud tucked in there. It's got a sort of rubberized crash protector that runs all the way under there. Uh, oh, that's it really guys I think. There's not really much else. Did I ride it? I can't tell you if the brakes are good, I can't tell you how it handles, I can't tell you anything. The tyres look pretty beefy, then they look pretty similar to the Magic Marys that are on my uh, high bike. Right, while I'm chatting, this is my mate's new specialised Levo Turbo base model. Uh, I did have a Levo Turbo, that was my first ever bike. This is my mate Greg's bike. He's not had an e-bike before and he'll do probably, he'll be on the road most of his rides. He won't, he'll come to Wales and do stuff with us too, but he'll ride it on the road a lot more than I would ride a bike on the road. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, just this finish, you probably can't see it. It's like a battleship grey, it's not white. But the, the paint finish and the, well, the finish of the whole bike is, is amazing. I, I love, yeah, I love the specialised bikes. I fitted his tubeless for him. Uh, lock off tubeless, that's all done. I fitted his pedals. I think he got this from the specialised concept store. I'm not sure which one it was. And it was probably one of the last large bikes in the UK. Still got a little sticker on there. He's got a link his butt app, phone app to the bike. We'll do, they're gonna go on a ride on Saturday. Uh, he hasn't ridden it yet, as you can see, look, it's just, it's brand new. So, yeah, I'm excited for him. It's his first e-bike, so he's, uh, he's well excited. So, I think I've fully charged it up. Let's have a look. Did I? Yep, it's fully charged. Ready to go. I think, I'm not 100% sure, I don't think they've changed this much over the 2020 bike. This is a 2021 bike. I think the only main difference is, I think the front forks, RockShock, I don't know what model forks they are, they're 160 mil forks. I think I'm right. I think that's all they've changed uh, for 2021. I think the rear shock is 150 mil, but don't quote me on that. But just thought I'd show you it quickly, but yeah, lovely bike, 29 inch wheels. I prefer 27 and a half for what I do and how I ride, you know, doing the downhill stuff in Wales and that. I just find, I don't know, there's something about the smaller wheels that drop offs and jumps and bits. I don't know, I think the bigger wheels to me, it sort of bucks you forward a bit. I, I don't know, it's just my, just my personal opinion. I prefer the 27 and a half inch wheels that my brother's got on his Canevo. Uh, my mate Biggs, he's got that, those on his Canevo. Uh, I think we've all got the same small, smaller wheels, 27 and a half inch wheels. 
Oh, one thing, guys. Uh, I'll put a picture now of my brother's Canevo. He's actually ordered one of these to come in June, in theory, if it's not stuck in, in the port or whatever. So anyone interested in his 2020 Canevo Comp? I think it's a Comp. Yeah, he's got it for sale now. It's, it's, it's immaculate. He's it's got loads of bling parts added to it. It's, it's perfect. So I'm not sure what he wants for it. But anyone interested in a, in a medium Canevo Comp, give me a shout and I'll put you in touch with my bro. Uh, yeah, he'll sell it next week. If he doesn't sell it for a month, then that's fine because he'll keep it until his new bike comes in June. And he's ordered one of these. Uh, he saw this, sat on it, looked at the spec and thought, oh my God, he said, just, yeah. And he's only got, I think the Canevo's only got a 500 watt battery, which is fine, but he wants a bike with a little bit more of a battery. Obviously, I don't know what the new Canevo's are now. Probably five and a half grand for the Comp, maybe six and a half for the Expert. I, I don't know. Anyway, guys, anyone interested in this Canevo, give me a shout and I'll put you in touch with him. Right, that's it really. Uh, not much else I can say until I get this out for a ride. As I said, I'm keeping the focus. That's going to be my spare bike for now. If anyone wants to come for a ride or test out a, one of my mates test out an e-bike that's not been ridden one before, they can use the focus. I don't mind. <laughs> it's quite funny, guys. Once When I post a uh, e-bike video on my channel, I lose about 20 subscribers because I keep my channels quite motorbike based. But it is G-Man's bikes and bits. It's not just bikes, as in motorbikes. Anyway, I make these videos for fun for my mates to look back and have the memories. I don't make them for anyone else. And if people leave my channel because I've made a video of an e-bike, then they can get lost. I have no problem with that at all. I do not give a shit. It's not a big deal. This isn't my my business this is a hobby it it's that's all it is to me so i don't care if i have one subscriber or five million it means nothing to me at all now i love it that you guys follow me you know it's great you know i'm no expert in what i'm normally what i'm talking about but yeah anyway i just find it quite funny when i post a video like this one <laughs> people leave my channel i'm still going to do bike videos I actually i'll put a picture now of my super duke motorbike i got out of the garage the other day and i'm going to ride it next week and make a video but it's been locked down. I've not been able to go out on a bike. You're not supposed to go out on bikes, but next week I'm going to take it for a run into town because I'm, uh, I've got to go and check some stuff at work. So I'm using it to ride to work. So I'll have a little chat on that. Chat normal bollocks that I normally do uh, and have a bit of fun. So yeah, guys, that's, that's how it is with me. I make these videos for a laugh. You know, I might swear a bit. <sighs> I don't care, I'm just me. If people don't like it, then go and watch someone else's channel. I'm not interested. Anyway, enough ranting. Uh, as I said, guys, any questions, give us a shout. I don't know much about the Levo, really. I don't know much about this, to be fair. All I know from putting the Invisi frame on and looking at all the little details, the little things that might have got, the little logos and the finish and the build quality just, just seems superb. So, yeah. Anyway, all right, guys. Take it easy and I'll see you next time. Cheers.